What's up, Nancy? You want to play or something? Oh, that thing's shiny. Nancy? Are you in love? Hey everybody, Jake here, and way back in October, Sega invited me to check out Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth in a lengthy preview demo, and they even had it set up like at the revolver bar. Very cool. In this demo, I ran around the open world Hawaii setting, took part in so many fights, saw some goofy side stories, played some fun mini games, experienced the new Animal Crossing-like mode, and fought a shark. With all of this said, I am not an expert on the Like a Dragon franchise, so I got a few of my buddies together, Devin, Jesse, and Moises, that also did the preview, to give you the full scoop. You can find information on following them in the description below, but let's jump right into our discussion. Uh, I think I'm going to Moises first. Moises, what was the moment in this demo that stood out to you that you said, oh, wait a second, I think we might have something here? Uh... It definitely happened early on. It was in the first portion when we were playing as Ichiban in Hawaii. And I had been messing around and like kind of exploring the side stories because that's part of the appeal of the Like a Dragon games. But then I took like a little detour to the beach and I saw that you could shake the, the like the palm trees on the beach and things would fall out of it. There's uh, there's frequently ways in which like you can interact with the environment to get like potions or, or little things that you can sell for money. And instead, a crazy guy dressed like a coconut fell out of the tree instead. And then we had a fight on the beach. Oh. And that was when I kind of knew, all right, this might be the game for me. <laughs> I didn't see Coconut Guy. That's what I like that part of our demo too, because I feel like we all saw different things because we're exploring this massive open world map in Hawaii. And uh, Jesse, I kind of want to go to you for this because you do have some experience with this franchise. Uh, this game, we're getting out of Japan. I feel like a lot of people are kind of familiar with that, that kind of like street block that Yakuza typically takes place in. And just coming from previous entries in the franchise to this one, do you feel like this is a noticeable step up? Is there something here being offered that's like, oh man, this is almost the next generation of these games? Oh, absolutely. So like Honolulu City, where like the majority of, of at least our demo took place, mm -hmm. is like, I think they said it was like double or triple the size of Kamarocho. Like it's huge. It's massive. So much so that like they're giving us a segue to roll around on, oh, yeah. uh, which like normally you're just running around Kamarocho, like just on foot. And this time they're like, no, we're going to give you a vehicle because like this place is massive and like it feels distinct, right? Mm -hmm. Like it like obviously Hawaii is not Japan. They are two very different places, but like it's nice to have sort of like a reprieve from Kamarocho and like sort of this like next chapter of the game is it's interesting because it's it's a very different vibe. You're walking on the beach, you're like throwing the shaka to people, you're like swimming in the ocean, you're doing all sorts of crazy stuff, and it's it's a good time. And you get the you get the uh, the mascot here uh, from the the Happy Tours excursion place. I don't even know what you call it. You go like scuba diving, you do all sorts of stuff. And can you explain that really quick to the audience that 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 mechanic of what exactly you're doing with those with those tours? Yeah, so you you go on the, so, so in the first in like a dragon you you would go to like a freelance job agency and you would that's how you would get new classes for your characters. In this game, you meet up with this weird palm tree mascot and you're like, "All right, cool. We're going to go on excursions around Hawaii and that's going to give you a new job." So I did one where it was like I went scuba diving and then I had like I think it was called the aquanaut class and it was yeah. you were just your character suddenly just wearing scuba gear and has like the big flippers and the oxygen tank. Uh, I did one where I went surfing and then like Ichiban just carried a surfboard and wore didn't wear a shirt and was like, "I'm a surfer now." And I would do like crazy surfboard moves against my enemies and stuff. So you go on these like excursions and then you get new jobs for your characters and that's that's a fun way to introduce new classes definitely yeah as far as like rpg mechanics go i think something i like is anytime a class gets like its own unique outfit i'm kind of mm -hmm. into that that's how i was choosing you know i was going down that list and i was like oh i kind of like surfy surfy ichiban here i think he's gonna be the one but it's cool because everybody in the party it seemed like also had access to those classes and had like unique things about them too so it wasn't yeah. just restricted to that one character um but devin what, it, what what stood out to you in this in this whole big demo that we 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 got to play so I am also not super familiar with the series. I am much more, I have a Junimo, like I'm a very much cozy gaming person. So Dondoku Island 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> I could have spent the whole preview there. I was already making plans in my head of like how to improve my house. And like, I got rid of all of the trash, like yeah. <laughs> literally all of it in the short time that we had there. It's so delightful. I had so much fun with that. And I cannot wait to basically play a second game within the game entirely. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. I feel like um, the Animal Crossing influence to me is clear just because yeah. part of going to this island and like building it up is not, oh my God, guest appearance. What did you yes, think of is. the demo? <laughs> what, Tommy, uh, what did you think? This is Tommy. I have Timmy and Tommy are my cats. Like I have Animal Crossing named oh my cat. God. Serious over here. But he's decided to join us. He probably like he would like it. I think. Okay. I think he'd enjoy Don't Do Who I Could not have scripted that better. Just is it, yeah. perfect. <laughs> Isn't it kind of funny though that the on the Dondoku Island there's like those mascot characters that are like, I don't know. To me, I was like, oh, you're channeling Animal Crossing. Like you're like you are the little animals like in this little town. Um, yeah. And I yeah, and I thought that was kind of a funny like little moment of commentary there to to kind of directly be addressing another game. But I had this. I'm almost glad now that we've had so much time between us playing the demo and talking about it because I had this moment when I was playing the Dondoku. Dondoku Island of the demo, where I was destroying all the trash. And it's this funny thing that I think if you play these kind of games, you're familiar with it, where you can kind of see the grid of play. And it's like, okay, I'm here and the trash is here and you strike it with your thing and then it goes away and you move on to the next square and you do the same thing. And I was like, this feels terrible. And I was not having a good time. And then I, and then I think, thinking about it more as time went on, I was like, but is it just because I'm not playing those kinds of games? Is it is it channeling those kinds of games so like perfectly that the verisimilitude is like throwing me off because the smoothness everywhere else in the game is really nice actually and it and it but it almost does it takes on like a different game feel when you are in the like Animal Crossing version of the world. Do other people know what I'm saying here? Or did you all enjoy yeah. every second of it? Yeah. It I have found that for games like that, like I'll see reviews sometimes of that style of game that mm. are like, there's so much labor. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> That's the point. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's very much if you're not used to literally just like cleaning up an entire yard of trash and being like sick, it's it doesn't <laughs> flow as naturally, I think. I didn't even think about how at the beginning you have to clear out the island from the ne'er do wells, and now yeah. I'm like, now I'm like, oh man, I want, I, now I want a future Animal Crossing to take that and say, all right, these un there's a bunch of uncivilized animals first, <laughs> and we do need battle. to, we need to, yeah, we need to. Now we wear clothes, all right, we're the <laughs> cool, yeah. Um, I would yeah. fight all of my villagers. I think. Yeah, See, I that's, think a, I that's a good game. It. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of want to, so getting away from that mode and going back to kind of like the main stuff, I did have one concern that got brought up in this demo and I just wasn't sure. Maybe it was like the, the way that they kind of made us really powerful. I thought when we were running around the open world and doing battles was that I never really had to, uh, interface with the combat mechanics, like the turn based mechanics in the game. And it kind of felt like it was doing a lot of the work for me. Like no matter which attack I did, it was like, I, I'm not really seeing like why I would do this over doing that. It kind of feels like we just get to the same result and, it, and no matter which way I go. Did anybody else have a different experience? Am I just a God? Is that part of it? Uh, is it, yeah. What, what I'll say about that is, I, I think that that's a similar problem that the that like a dragon had where it was mm -hmm. like, when you're, when you're, when you're fighting the, the street ruffians and you're fighting the, the tourists of Hawaii or, or whatever, uh, they're, they're largely supposed to be pretty like inconsequential. Mm -hmm. Uh, and like a dragon has like a notoriously, a notorious difficulty spike, like pretty like late in the game where it's like, you're kind of just, you know, cruising, not really thinking about it. And then you hit a wall and it's like, no, now you need to like get good at the combat. Now, now we're going to like, you're going to have to level up a little bit. We're going to, you're going to have to start thinking a little more strategically. You're going to have to start using buffs and debuffs. It has that very classic RPG like wall. Here's like, here's the moment we're going to hit you in the face. We're going to say, learn how to play this game because you've been coasting this entire time, but we're going to hit you with it. And I would not be surprised if Infinite Wealth had a very similar situation where it's like, when you unlock the battle tower or whenever you have to do a certain story chapter, it's like, here's a really difficult boss that you're not going to be able to brute force unless you've grinded, you know, 100 levels, but we're going to make you 
we're gonna make you understand this combat system in order to progress. My, I think the favorite thing I ran into when I was just like running around in the open world was there's like, uh, there's like this Hollywood film director. Do you remember this one? And oh, I did this. I did this up story. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. He, he's like making an action movie, and the whole thing is that like you got to run down the street while dodging these cars that are coming at you. And I and I got to tell you, as somebody that's like new to the franchise, pretty much, I was like really impressed by how quickly they were like all right here's here's the premise here's what's going on here's your role in it here's this character and that character here's what you're going to be doing let's go and they like did a little did a little arc like really fast that i was engaged in i liked the little mini game and i thought it was like it encouraged me to do all the other ones because i was like oh they're they're good at this they're good at these like little stories um did anybody else come across one of these like little little things that made an impression oh, like on the them sub, yeah. The yeah, yeah i did a mission where there was a girl who wanted to tell, it was on the beach, a girl wanted to tell her crush that she liked him, um, and she had a letter, but he was one of many men buried in the sand, and they were in this big, like, grid, and you had to find the right one to give the note to, and it was sort of like a puzzle where you could talk to them, and they would give you clues that were like, well, they're in the left row, or they're not next to someone with, like, a hat on, or, like, you know, those kinds yeah. of logic like process of elimination puzzles so then i helped like reunite them it was very cute it was so random too um but i liked that one a lot it was so sweet because i had just like fought a bunch of people on the street then i was like i'll deliver a love letter for you like why not <laughs> i mean it's a very universal experience i would say is i mean i know for me like my first kiss was a man buried in the sand so yeah. I'm sure everybody yeah. can. Yeah. Okay. After yeah. A stranger I, that's what I delivered you a letter about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like it sounds like we're all pretty positive about the game. Jesse, you were saying to me earlier that you had maybe some criticisms, concerns. Is there is there something I want to I want to be hit with this? I want to keep my eyes and ears open for the full yeah. game. So what's on uh, your mind? Yeah. So as somebody who has played the majority of the the Yakuza games, uh, most of them are not in English. I think it's it's a very right. recent thing that they've brought on like English VO and Kiryu's English VO is like not the best. Mm. Uh, and I know they've recently just got a new actor for Kiryu as for Gaiden in this game um, because I think the person who voiced Kiryu in Yakuza Like Dragon is a different, different actor now I believe. Um, but there's just something off about the performance, and I can't tell if it's just because I'm so used to Kiryu's Japanese VO that hearing like an, an, an American version of it is just strange. But I felt like there are like a lot of really emotional and pivotal moments that we saw in this demo for Kiryu, like, you know, crafting his bucket list and, and doing all of these sort of like reminiscing on, on old moments. And I'm just like, this is not the Kiryu I know. I don't know who this person is, but I, I think from like a performance standpoint, I didn't like it from a just like a voice standpoint. I didn't like it. There was something off about it. And I don't know if that's just me or if that's uh, that was like universal across the demo. But um, yeah, I don't know. That was like kind of my biggest thing where I was just I kept getting taken out of it. I was like, oh, I don't. I don't know who this is. I don't know okay. who this person is. It's I don't funny. Know who this character I, is. I, it's funny. I almost, I almost had a similar reaction, be, uh, but just because of the inconsistency in when the English VO was being utilized. Like sometimes you just go to stores and stuff, and they're like, "Oh no, we didn't, we didn't cut the English for this one." And and it's like, some, and somebody's like talking in Japanese, and I'm just like, "Oh, that's weird," you know. And like, yeah. so that kind of takes me out of it too, and it kind of makes me think like, maybe I should just play the whole game with the Japanese voice, you know what I mean? Just so it's consistent the whole time. That would be my recommendation. I, okay. I have exclusively played these games in Japanese. Oh, it's, okay. It's incredible. Uh, great, well, I, I just want to thank you all for uh, coming on, talking to me about uh, Like a Dragon. Hopefully we can talk about it more as we get closer to the release of Infinite Wealth. It is not that far away. At the time you're viewing this video, I think it's about three weeks away, the 24th. I think is the release date for this puppy. So we're, uh, we're yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. We're, we're coming up on it fast. But um, I wanna know from you all, I'm sure everybody watching this video is like, oh my God, I've seen Jake a million times. Old old news, you couldn't care less about this guy, but these three people, these people are, they're, they're so attractive, interesting. I, I wanna follow them. Where do I, Moises, how do, how do people follow you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, not X. Twitter uh, at uh, Platano Ranger. That's P L A T A N O Ranger. Uh, and you can find my work at pastemagazine.com. Uh, and just to, so people can get to know you a little bit better, what, what was your game of the year for 2023? 
Oh, my game of the year for 2023 was uh, a infamous uh, dual protagonist game, uh, Alan Wake 2. Oh, lovely. Yeah. I also, I've always loved your your handle, Plata, because the I feel like non-Latino people have not discovered plantains yet. And I've, oh, I, yeah. You could still go to the store and get them for like 80 cents. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's so good. Yeah. yeah it's, right. a, it's, a, it's a nickname from middle school that just kind of stuck. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, Devin, where can people find you? Oh, good. My cat's here. Just in case. Yes. Hello. Um, <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tommy, oh. Timmy, Tommy. Oh, <laughs> flew right out. Me. Uh, on Twitter. Yeah. Not X. Uh, and also Instagram. My handle is the same. It's uh, Lil underscore Kombucha, which is what a friend once said my rapper name would be. Mm. Uh, <laughs> big Kombucha fan. And, um, you can find my work at ScreenRant.com. Great. And your game of the year, 2023. Ooh. <laughs> the one that is coming to mind right now. <laughs> okay, my first thought was Minico's Night Market, so I'm just going to run with it. I really liked Minico's Night Market. Either that or maybe Thirsty Suitors. Thirsty cool. Suitors is also an extremely good game. I know Moises loves this game as well. Uh, both very cute, fun, interesting indie games. So highly recommend awesome. those guys. Jesse, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me on, on Twitter, not X, yeah. at, um, at Jesse Vitelli, J-E-S-S-E-V-I-T-E-L-L-I. Um, you can find my old work at Prima Games, but I'm not there cool. anymore. You want yeah. my new work? I don't know where that's going to be yet, but we'll figure it out at some point. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of chilling. Uh, same handle on basically everything, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, what other other people use. Um, yeah. And what's, what what was your goatee 2023? Uh, I'm boring. It was Baldur's Gate 3. No, they're not I boring at all. <laughs> not boring at all. People have been screaming at us for not talking about it as enough on this channel. So I was actually hoping somebody here would say it so that I could say, I also love Baldur's Gate 3. I love it. It's a great, it's a great game. video game. Great, yeah, great video game. I played a bard. I wasn't fighting anybody. Oh, it, was, yeah. it was, no, absolutely great time. Um, thank you again, everybody, for joining us. We'll have more on the channel about uh, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. I appreciate you for sticking around to the end of this video. Now you know all these people. You already know me. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>